Hi, welcome to today's video where we will be discussing the early induced innate immune responses within our bodies. All right, so our immune systems are actually composed of two subsystems, the first of which is our innate immune system, which basically acts as a defense against all types of pathogens. And then we have the adaptive immune system, which is really more advanced and very specific to fight certain pathogens. So um, targeting a specific virus and then remembering that virus a second time around. So if you want to learn more about the innate versus adaptive immune systems, you can find the video titled Elements of Immunology. But today we're just going to hone in a little bit more on an aspect of the innate immune system. So within our innate immune responses, we have our immediate innate immunity, which happens zero to four hours after exposure. And then we have our early induced innate immunity, which happens a little bit later from four to 96 hours after exposure to a pathogen. And today we're just going to talk about the early induced innate immunity. If you wanna learn more about the immediate innate immunity, you can find that in a separate video. So our innate immune cells have to be able to tell what is friend from foe. So it has to be able to identify pathogens within our bodies. And um, so unlike the adaptive immune response where the adaptive immune cells have a really advanced um, way of identifying um, pathogens and specific pathogens, our innate immune response has to be able to have a very simple way to identify a broad range of pathogens. And so to do this, they look for certain things called pathogen-associated molecular patterns. So these are molecules that are found on the outsides of pathogens that are very unique to a certain pathogen type. So for example, in this figure here, you can see different types of bacteria, and these bacteria have these little squiggly lines is what they look like, but these are flagella, and so these help the bacteria move. And so these um, flagella can actually be thought of as a, a PAMP because this is a molecular pattern that's found on these types of pathogens. So this is a certain type of thing that these innate immune cells will look for. They will also look for um, our own cells that are either damaged or um, have been transformed in a negative way, such as cancer cells. And so um, these cells of our own that also need to be taken care of are called danger-associated um, molecular patterns or what's found on our own cells that the innate immune response has to attack. And so to recognize these PAMPs or DAMPs, our immune cells have what are called pattern recognition receptors or PP, PRRs, sorry. And so these are on the surface of the cell membranes of our innate immune cells. And so what happens is the, the PRRs will recognize and bind to the PAMPs or DAMPs. And then once this binding occurs, um, the immune cell will then recruit or send the alarm for other killer cells such as phagocytes, natural killer cells, or leukocytes or white blood cells. So here we can see we have our immune cell and then on the cell membrane or the cell surface we have our pattern recognition receptor. And then this will um, identify what's shown here is a um, bacteria. And so these little circles on the outside would be our PAMP. And so this binding will then signal the alarm for other immune cells to come and then destroy this bacteria. And so the innate immune response is actually thought of to have evolved as an earlier form of immunity compared to the adaptive response. And so the innate immune response has to 
be able to fight off multiple different pathogens, but it has some limitations in how well it can do that. And so the number of PRRs that's on the surfaces of our innate immune cells is limited by mainly two things. The first of which is, so all the PPRs that's on the cell membrane are actually encoded for in the DNA of that cell. And so our cells really only have a certain amount of DNA that they can have within them to allocate for all the different parts of the cell. And so it can only really delegate a certain amount of its DNA to these PRRs, which is the first limit limitation. And then the second of which is so these cells have a limited amount of space on their cell membrane. So they can only reach a certain size. And so the cell membranes also have to have other different types of recept um, receptors and proteins. So this limited amount of space is also one of the limitations to the number of PRRs that can be on the cell surface. And ultimately what we get with our innate immune system is this balance of having um, enough PRRs on the surface to identify PAMPs and DAMPs to really um, accurately defend against pathogens, but also we have those limitations that I just spoke about. So they have to be able to get by with this very broad defense system. And this is very, um, distinct compared to the adaptive immune system, which is very much evolved and specific to identify pathogens. But even with these limitations, it's quite impressive because the PRRs in our immune system are actually estimated to recognize over 1,000 different microbes um, with this very simple um, defense mechanism. So, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you wanna learn more about our immune systems and our bodies or any other um, biological topics, please subscribe for more.